Uh, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Taito Ecology. And we are here in our rainforest biodome, Fernville. And guess what? Everything's not dead this time. We have done better. So all of our decomposers have been working very, very hard. And they have been keeping everything alive, which I am very grateful for. Well, I say everything, but we have actually been losing a few of our prey species. These little guys, the agotes, are having some issues. Because we have one population over here. I don't think it's this one. Agote territory. Yeah, look at this guy. There's only one of him and I have no idea why there's only one of him except for maybe the fact that there's only so many days until like they reproduce and when they reproduce I don't know if they need to be near either just like the same agotes in a territory or if they need to be next to another agote territory or if our ocelots have just been eating so many of them that they aren't able to reproduce quickly enough so I added in lots more agotes I added in lots more ferns um a few trees like a lot of trees like look at all this this is beautiful this is beautiful and it's still alive and apparently the biodome health is still really high and we've got these goatees we've got goatees over here and we have our two ocelots which i'm pretty excited about and it still says like 331 days until they reproduce i'm really hoping we can get some ocelot babies pretty soon because that would be awesome but yeah there's 10 here one here i think our goatees were being over um predated so they were being kind of wiped out from having the predators just these two ocelots which is very interesting start eating through so many of them so i really thought that like these populations would be able to support my ocelots a little bit better but they actually were starting to cause collapse of the agote territories so what else do the ocelots eat i think we should definitely check that out let's see if we can find one we're, we're on the hunt for ocelots okay there's nagoti adorable adorable here's the ocelot territory here's another goatee there's so many little living things everywhere and i've been trying to add in more plants i haven't really bought any more plants or anything yet because i wanted you guys to be able to be with us yay weekly income Ooh, look at that diversity score look at that plant score Ooh, we're on this all right and here we go some little earthworms those earthworms have been so essential hi little guys two weeks old so essential to keeping everybody happy and healthy is that an ocelot it's a sleeping ocelot! Check this out! Alright, so this is a 48 week old ocelot, so they've been around for a long time. And let's look at this diet again. Strict carnivores. Though they're on the small side, they can be highly efficient killing machines. Larger animals like tapirs don't have much to fear from ocelots, but small and medium animals better watch out. Predators. Though ocelots are keen hunters, they are also hunted from time to time. Large predators like eagles and jaguars will prey on ocelots, both young and adult. Notes. Since ocelots can only take small prey effectively, they hunt rather often. It's estimated that an ocelot will make a kill every kilometer it travels. <gasps> no wonder I started running out of a goji. So they really do eat quite a bit. So that's good to know. Um, and does it mention habitat, life cycle, social life? Uh, the ocelot's strike spots and stripes are one of a kind no two ocelots have the same pattern very cool and fun fact those kinds of stripes spots patterns are how researchers will identify the animals that they're studying when they use uh like cameras to trap like the trap cams is what they're called to take pictures of animals as they walk by and i follow a really cool cheetah researcher on twitter and she posts stuff uh she is out in the field in africa right now and she posts stuff all the time and the way she's able to tell which cheetah she's looking at is she's so good at what she does that she can look at a picture and see like two dots in different places on the cheetah's pelt and be like yep that's so and so i wonder what they're doing over here last time i saw them was such and such years ago and it's really cool just seeing how she has such an intimate awareness and understanding of these big predators because she's been following them for so many years and she's learned how to tell them apart so that's really fun to me all right biome found in rainforest as well as warm grasslands and swampy areas um compared to other wild cats like jaguars and lions ocelots are very small they're the largest member of their genus however their cousins the jeffrey cat pampas cat and others are house cat sized or even smaller i love the jeffrey cat oh my gosh i need to show you guys that guy sometime but yeah so here's our ocelots now i have a little bit of the mystery of what on earth <gasps> where's our frogs where's our frogs i just realized i think our ocelots ate all of our frogs i think they ate all our frogs i think we need to provide some more food for our ocelots in terms of some of these guys so we have lost our little insectivore frogs <laughs> i think they were eaten so let's go ahead i think we need to add in like a few populations of frog 
And hopefully if we add in a few of them, they'll be able to kind of stay alive. And then let's also add in maybe um, some more ants. Where are my ants? Here's some insects, the moths who help to pollinate everything. In fact, maybe I should add in more moths. So let's put in more moths over here too for our frogs. And then let's add in more ants, again, kind of for our frogs, but also because they're scavengers that sort of clean up after the other guys. And hopefully adding in a few frogs will help things. Let's speed things along so we can get more of our little energy too. And then I'm thinking that with all of the Terra money we have, I actually want to buy a new section to our biodome. And that's a little bit scary because what happens to the biodome we've been so gently and carefully taking care of, but I think it's going to be fun. So let's go ahead. I know I said that we'd probably look at a different biodome this time, but then my rainforest started doing well again. So I wanted to take care of it. All right, let's go ahead and open up zone two. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Do you just like jump between the different zones or are they connected? Um, can I did, I, did I just connect up my zones? Is this open now? Nope. <gasps> Look at all this space. Wow, this is so cool. So zone two has like zero hit points. So we need to add some things in over here. Let's start with some nice plants, maybe uh, some nice little ferns. There you go. The very first plants of zone two. How cool is that? How fun! All right, maybe we'll put in some of these zebra plants and maybe some more ferns. And I should probably get um, the decomposers up and going already. So let's get some worms in here. Let's get some mushrooms in here because mushrooms are amazing. As we learned last time, you really have to have that bottom level of the pyramid, the decomposers and all of the prey animals, really big, high populations of those guys, just so you can go up the levels and support one apex predator. Because there's so many that you need just to keep like these one, this one group of creatures alive. So now we're probably going to have some of the creatures start wandering around over here too, which should be pretty fun. So let me see, I'm gonna put in some ants because ants are awesome. And then we can have an goatee population maybe at the edges here, but I kind of want to put in a yellowfoot tortoise pretty soon. So, hmm, I'm probably going to need more food, like more of the plant matter, like the pineapples and whatnot, if I'm going to try to have a tortoise. So why don't we go ahead and buy, um, oh, a okay, pock tree would be pretty cool. What about the papaya? Let's go ahead and get the, the papaya tree, the flame tree, and the kapok tree. Very expensive, but I think they're going to be worth it. So let's put in... Oh, wow, look at it. It's so cute. I thought the flame tree was going to be like this big giant tree. No, he's so tiny. Let's get a good look at him. All right, so what are you? Look at how cute you are. Yay! Plenty of plants achievement. Rainforest. You've unlocked all the rainforest plants. Now you can make a real rainforest. <laughs> so there we go. That gave us a little bit of energy too. How fun. All right. Let's put in a kapok tree, I guess. Wow! It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's so huge. All right. Come here, you. I'm going to kind of put the kapok tree at the middle over here. And then I bet it's going to need lots of earthworms to take care of the things in its roots. It's probably going to need lots of mushrooms in order to make sure that everything is broken down. And it's probably going to need some little creatures running around it too. So that it will be able to, um, yeah, and probably some pollinators. So that it'll be able to have the creatures pooping, which sounds inelegant, but that's the reality of what it needs to happen. Uh, in the area so that the decomposers can break down the matter and feed the tree that way. So let's have maybe some agouti live over by this tree or maybe an armadillo. Hmm, what's something cute? Let's see. Or we could have this coromandy. That would be kind of interesting. Peccary, capybara, hmm, the tortoise would be really fun. Now, what are you? Let's unlock this guy. I'm kind of curious about this guy now. So I kind of want to put him down, but I don't think we have enough plant, like enough plant matter to support him. But let's go ahead and put this little guy down. He's an omnivore. I think he'll eat a little bit of everything. And let's get a good look at him. <gasps> look at them! Oh my goodness, they're so cute. They're so cute. Look at them. With their little tails. Oh my gosh. So what do you guys need to eat? All right. Size. And they live in tropical rainforest. They are commonly seen around campsites or other areas with human activity. They have learned that where there are humans, there's often tasty food to eat. Sometimes groups of more than 20 animals will mob a tourist or camper. <gasps> 
They can be aggressive. Oh gosh, you guys. This is one reason why it's never a good idea to feed human food to wildlife. Good to know. All right. They are not picky eaters. They are omnivores that will eat insects, small animals, fish, fruit, leaves, nuts, roots, and even carrion, which is dead matter. So let's see. Jaguars, large snakes will eat these guys. Um, if it feels threatened, it usually tries to escape on the ground rather than hurrying up a tree. Their noses are long and flexible. This allows them to sniff the ground under leaves, logs, bushes, and other things. You never know where a tasty insect might hide. Good, good, good. So we need to make sure we provide plenty of food for these guys too. So maybe we'll put in some ants, like a little scavenger group of ants that they can nibble on. Um, and then let's get some like papaya. Oh, the papaya is so tiny. I thought the papaya was going to be big too. No, the papaya tree is actually kind of small. So we'll put a couple papaya trees down. And I think I'm going to need to get some pineapple and other things in here soon too. So I'll put you down and maybe a strangler fig over in this corner. The kapok tree is gigantic and beautiful. Now we have our little coromandis uh, hanging out over there. I really hope we can keep these guys alive. <laughs> Having a big biodome like this does not guarantee that we're going to be able to take good care of our little animals. All right. So I think, yeah, maybe a strangler fig over here. Everybody doing okay? Wow. Look at all of this. And then I think we need to have a lot more of these smaller herbivores um, moving and grooving and growing in the area. Where can I put this? Let's see. Strangler fig. Okay, that's a good spot for you right there. And then we'll get lots of ferns down in just a minute. But I would like to have a few of the smaller animals. Like, let's go ahead and buy this guy and this guy. Any of the small ones. I don't think we can support any of the large guys just yet. But I think it'd be really fun to have some of the small ones, like a, a tortoise hanging out down here. But I do think we probably need more plants first, because if we have our little omnivores right here, and he's getting hungry... Ooh, and there we go, we just got more weekly income. And he's getting hungry, and he's probably coming over to this papaya tree to nibble on it. And I think these leaves determine like how healthy the trees are. And uh, needs pollination. See, we've got a whole bunch of them coming over here. So I don't know how many like trees you need to add in before the plants start to become over harvested or over grazed. That's another issue. That's again, the plants are towards the bottom of that pyramid of food. And you need to have lots and lots and lots of those in order to support the creatures that eat them. Or else then you just start running out of everything and they all start dying. <laughs> and that's not good. That's not good. That's why everything is like such a fragile balance and yet it's really like life can be really fragile but it's also really amazingly resilient and I just love learning about ecosystems the most. All right, let's put this guy down and then maybe we can put some orchids in. We got to get plenty of food in. Maybe a palm, an acacia palm. Hmm, maybe some pineapples. I think, see, I feel like, I feel like our little trees are getting nibbled on quite a bit by these adorable little ones. And I feel like there needs to be more if we want to be able to support their population. Yeah, look, their hunger's already kind of going up. Hmm. So I think we need I think we need more plants. More plants is always the answer. Like we can put some little pineapples in here. There we go. And then just kind of keep an eye on everybody. Hang in there, little guys. I'm gonna try to get more things in here for ya. All right, we've got some of our insectivore frogs. Let's go and check in on our ocelots. I like how many plants I've added in over here. Hello, little ocelot. So here is a hungry ocelot. There is a, well, there was a goatee. It is now dead. It is, it's pretty, it's pretty dead. Yep. All right, well, there's, there's your predator-prey interaction going on right here. I'll go ahead and save that, I suppose. But that hopefully means that our little, um... Our little ocelot managed to get some food. So yeah, there it is. Oh my gosh, it's it's even more dead now. Now it's just a pile of meat. Oh my goodness. But that does mean that our ocelot is eating because now it's at 95. Now it's down to 97. They need to eat a lot. We probably need to add in more creatures over here, actually. So maybe, maybe this area is big enough to support one of these populations. So I'm going to put in a population, a territory of these guys. And then another territory of the agoti somewhere around here because there's just so many there's so many of them i wonder if that's too many <laughs> there needs to be so many of them just to support our ocelots i'm not sure how we're going to be able to like afford from ecological point of view to get some of the bigger predators at this rate hmm we're just going to keep having to add to it and see but i'm glad nothing's dead this time 
<laughs> That's a major perk. Woo! Yay! All right, are these guys doing okay? They're oh my gosh, look how hungry they're getting! Oh dear. Okay, more more orchids, more more acacias. What am I gonna do? I need to get like more energy. Hey you, um, um, give me more energy. Okay, so you can buy more energy that way if you're in kind of a pickle, and I think that's fine. They seem to like the papaya, and then maybe one of these palm trees can go over here. Maybe we can get another palm tree down over here. And I'll just keep adding them in. Maybe we need to put in a lot more of like the frogs, maybe some more insects. Let's put down like a couple more, maybe piles of ants. Will that help? Hey, hey tree. Hey tree, I need you to get over here to feed everybody, okay? There we go. So let's see if getting some more of the ants will help because the ants should provide a little bit of food. Maybe some frogs, maybe some armadillos. Yeah, let's put down like a whole bunch of, of the uh, butterflies. That should probably help. Like let's put butterflies over here because they're very pretty. We'll put in some of the butterflies. We'll start adding in some of the ants, like piles and piles of ants. Here I go. Well, I've got a lot of the terra coins, so I don't feel bad for kind of spending it really rapidly. All right, we probably need to start adding in some more of these guys because the, the detritus is going to start adding up and I don't want that. So we need plenty of mushrooms. As we learned from the land of skulls and death last time, need to keep all of those consumers or like the uh, the decomposers super busy. All right, are you guys doing okay? Kinda. All right, how about you? How about you? Are you getting some food? Looks like he's coming over to this fern. Is he gonna eat this fern? I think that he's eating this fern, and the fern I think is okay. So that should be good. All right, let's get some more earthworms in here, I think. Because earthworms, that just seems like a good go-to snack. It's not like those are going to run away from you when you're an adorable little guy like this. So that should be good. All right, I'm going to do another energy pack. I should probably just buy the large energy packs already. And let's get in more plants, maybe? Yeah, let's put some more pineapple over here. We've got to offer these guys like a huge wide variety of different food sources. And I think that they're going to do okay. Yeah, average health, average hunger. There's 10 out of 40, what? They can have a lot of those little guys in these territories. I don't think I realized just how abundant they could get. And hopefully that'll be all right. All right, I kind of want to add in a tortoise. So I do kind of want to put down a tortoise. Another one of our insectivores. Let's actually put in an armadillo. I feel like it's about time with all of these insects roaming around, to have an adorable armadillo that just sorts of, sort of walks around and focuses on trying to eat all the yummy things. So let me look at you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh, armadillos. They're so cute. They're so cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and there are our frogs. Yay. Oh, I need more insects for my insectivores. Here, moths. <laughs> moths, quickly, to the rescue. Maybe, maybe more moths, like over here. And then I definitely want to get some more ants because there can be a lot of ants. Oh yeah, that's right. If you look at, I think this tells you how many you start with. I'm beginning to see all the dots connect. So if you look at the number when you like get the creature, like you buy it, then that I think tells you how many you get to start with. And then the numbers will change as they either breed or they are all eaten and they're not able to reproduce quickly enough to keep that balance. So see, it's beginning to all connect up. I'm starting to get it. All right, so these guys should be okay. And our ocelots, being one of those higher up the food chain animals, are really helpful for coming over, popping by, and checking to see like how the health of the whole community is doing based off of how they are doing. So let's put down some more ants. There we go. And I think we're doing pretty good, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and buy like a hundred of the energy so that we can put down a couple more things really, really quickly. Yay, look at that. See, it's totally worth it. Like we can put in some more papaya over here. And I think I want to get some more earthworms because I'm beginning to worry a little bit about all of the detritus that is going to be piling up. I want to keep on top of that. And then finally, let's put in some yellow tortoises that just get to kind of hang out. They are in herbivores, they're herbivores. Let's put in a little yellow tortoise who just gets to kind of hang out on the edge of the river like this. So there we go. There we go, little buddy. You just, you do you, you're adorable. Look at how cute they are. Oh my goodness, I'm actually really proud of what we've accomplished so far. It's starting to look kind of like a, a cool little biodome that I would actually want to go and visit. And now we have a gigantic pile of tortoises. So how can you not, how can you not enjoy a gigantic pile of tortoises? 
Good, good, good. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it alone for a little while, you guys, and continue to monitor it over the next few days and just make sure that everybody stays alive this time because <laughs> it does make you feel like you're playing virtual villagers again and you've done something terrible when you come back and they're all dead and you're like, oh, dear. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> so I'll continue to monitor them. I think our ocelots are still doing good. I would love to see what happens after they reproduce. And then we'll have to see about maybe expanding enough and adding in enough that we'll be able to add in some of the big predators next time and possibly even start poking into some of the other types of uh, ecosystems we can work with, like the desert and the grasslands. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.